The following let's play has been rated perfectly fine to watch. Any attempts to break the game are for entertainment value only. However, if any typos happen to be found, <laughs> Huh, so there is something else in this room. Here's a clue. And there's where the crystal token is. And now let us head up this elevator. Oh gosh, don't even tell me. I did! Wow! Okay, first off, the screen is supposed to be black. However... That takes care of whatever that was. Where's the elevator? I lost track of the elevator. My gosh, did I really not have Mr. Knight just say, Oops, it's too dark in here, I better go back in the door. Because the ability here at the, in the first floor, remember how I skipped the ability shop? The ability shop teaches you how to see in the dark. Well, now I'm just tempted to see if I can just go through this room in the dark. Just because I... Uh, it it's let it lets me. Is there a sign in here? Yes. Caution. This dark room may make moving around quite difficult. On the other hand, if you can read this, you probably don't have to worry. Actually, this sign is pretty pointless for those who can't see in the first place. Unless you actually know the sign is there. But seriously, I should have had him turn back. I'm so totally going to take advantage of that in the speed run. Alright, so, while I sh I'm sure I can ma manage my to, uh, why did I tr try going through there? While I'm sure I can manage to try going through that, uh, dark room without being able to see, I think for the sake of it would be more interesting to watch, I'm just gonna go ahead and learn how to see in the dark. Anyway, the ability shop thankfully is right over here, so let us get ourselves the last ability in the game. Good, you have a 235 tokens. Here is your new ability. With light there comes darkness. With darkness comes new sight. Let everything seem bright! Okay, that spell was actually kind of cool. Lights! Whoa, the lights came off, but I can still see! Well, sort of. I've given you supervision, which allows you to not only see in the dark, but in any other instances where it's hard to see. You remember the cloudy and steamy areas in Cloud 9 and Hot Rock? Yeah, apparently night vision fixes that makes sense except everything will have a shade of green why green it looks cool haven't you ever seen the effect on TV TV is that another button on the thing that's being used to control me oh right boring medieval age that has to change that's a little clue there of what I was gonna do for a sequel have I mentioned the sequel in this let's play yet yeah, I was planning a sequel. It's not actually in development, but one of the ideas I had for the sequel was just a running a movie studio. Yeah, seriously. I, uh, I scrapped that idea, though. I decided that it would rely too heavily on references that you have to get in order to find funny. You've learned every ability I have to teach. If you ever have a problem getting through a spot, it'll probably be your fault. Your door will close itself on your way out. And now, let us proceed to head back up to the top floor where we shall go ahead and... You know... Proceed to get through that dark room. So... There's certainly a bit of story going on here, isn't there? 
Oh, by the way, if you didn't uh, find Monkey in both Lucky Woods and in Cloud Nine, he would not have been here. Uh, which brings up a little bit of a complaint that's been going that that has previously happened, and I kind of have right now. But we'll get to that in a bit. Instead, let's talk about the story. This game has plot going on. We found Monkey in Lucky Woods, and then we met Zone in Mount Snow, and he was talking about, "Hey, my friends are in danger. There was this guy who's oppressing us." And then we found Monkey again, who's looking to get into space in Cloud Nine, and then we have the story going on here. This game has more story going on than Banjo Kazooie or Banjo Tooie. I mean, in Banjo Kazooie, you had the opening cutscene and then another little cutscene saying, "Hey, Gruntilda is going to steal Kazooie's looks with this machine," and then she just sits there for the entire game for whatever reason, and there's no more real story going on until you actually reach the final area. And it's the same with Banjo uh, Banjo Tooie, except it seemed like that was going to have a bigger story because you have this opening sequence which. Something big happens because I don't want to say spoilers because it's even though it's the beginning of the game It's a really big event and then you have another story sequence after that where you actually s Barely escape getting zombified And then once again, there's no story until you get to the end of the game It seemed like that Banjo-Tooie was really going to have a story going on, but it didn't so a kind of funny to think that as superior as Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie are to this game, this game actually has a superior story. Anyway, now that we can see in the dark, we can actually... You know, it's a good thing that I did go back down to... Oh, hey, another one of these switches that do nothing. But it's a good thing I went down to learn how to see in here because I would have missed all these tokens and then I'd have to come back up here anyway. And over here we have... Yeah, this is the end of the room. Let me double check to make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm trying to figure out if these guys have another attack. Because it would seem strange that we're in the final area and the enemies here have only one attack. And it has occurred to me that despite the challenge of these guys, despite the fact that even with your most powerful attack, these guys take more than one hit, it ultimately doesn't really change anything because they give you health right back after... Yeah, so I'm not even taking any real damage. Maybe those guys don't have an extra attack. I wonder if it's the robots that have a different attack. Oh, sure, this robot I can use Biggest Blast on. What was the deal with that other robot? And as far as these guys go, you can take them out in one hit now with Biggest Blast. So there's really no reason to use Bird Watch. I mean, Bird Watch was useful earlier before I used, uh, learned Biggest Blast, but not so much now. Anyway, I guess those guys really do only have one attack. Weird. Oh, last to uh, token. Well, not the last token. Still got plenty more to find. Where did you come from? You're not allowed to be here. What are you doing to them? I need their energy. I'm not sure how, but these guys are full of energy. These machines are draining their energy and giving it to me. But why? I have a feeling I'm going to need it in a battle. I don't know how you knew I was going to fight you, but... No, not this battle. I don't need to steal energy to win in this fight. But I will not let you interfere with my plans. You know... The wording here seems off to me for some reason. He's talking about he's going to fight us, so... But he's not going to let us interfere in this fight or I don't know it's something the wording just bothers me activating security system okay that was a silly sound effect security system online activating scanners 
Warning! Blind spots in the sensors have been found. Big deal! How's he gonna know where they are? Highlighting blind spots with yellow sparkly dots. What? Don't do that, you stupid computer! Initiating countdown to blasting intruder with lightning-like lasers. And now we have this fight. This fight sucks. It's not hard. But that's the problem. Alright, well, at the very least, I have a bit of a challenge right at the very start of this fight. You don't actually see what you're supposed to do, so one wrong step, and yeah, you're pretty much going to be screwed. However, all you have to do is take one step to the side, or maybe two steps. There we go. So, the computer is counting down. What's going on here is I have this, the ground la lined... Yeah, I have the ground line pretty much with a, in a diagonal grid with spots that count down when you step on them. So what we're supposed to do is just go to sparkly dot. That's where the blind spot is. Error, error, target not found. Targeting best possible target. That kind of looked like it hit me, but no, it actually uh, hit the bottom of the... I don't know what that is. Warning! Chamber 1 malfunction. Transporting all contents to storage on second floor. What? Readjusting sensors to eliminate blind spots. Good. New blind spots discovered. Highlighting blind spots. Crud! Well... At the very least, yeah, as this goes on, you can't actually see where they're starting off, so you actually have to walk a little in order to discover where they are. Uh, but still, once you know what, what to do, it's really not possible to take any damage in this fight unless you're stupid. For example, what if I were to just not step on this spot again and instead try to talk to him? One, and then I take damage, and then this blind spots move. Let's talk to him. Ha! I'm standing in the only blind spot over here. You're toast. Yeah, I kind of was. So, it's like, how do I improve this fight? I feel like I'm having a little bit of trouble explaining just how easy and not a challenge this fight really is. It's also obnoxious because every other step you're being annoyed by the computer trying to count down. Target not found. Targeting next best target. Warning! Chamber 2 malfunction. Your virtual head is a malfunction! Transporting all contents. Readjusting sensors. New blind spots discovered. Highlighting blind spots. What kind of security system tells the intruders where to hide anyway? And the next blind spot is up here. There's also another one across the room, but this one's closer, so we're going to go to it. Target not found. Targeting next best target. Warning! Chamber 3 malfunction. Transporting all contents. Override code stop now or else. Not listening. You've got to be kidding me. Readjusting sensors. New blind spots discovered. Only one found. Now we're getting somewhere. Highlighting only blind spot that is in the center of this room. Oh no. So I'll just uh, wander over to it. Yeah, these, uh, these uh, highlighted spots as far as I can tell, they are all just close enough to each other that as long as you know to go to them and directly to them and not wander off in some random direction like this, you're never going to get hit. Oh, how convenient. The last one's right here. So I'm just going to step on this over and over again. Target not found, etc. Warning! Chamber 4 malfunction! 
Transporting all contents. My work here is done. Oh no you don't. I'm not letting you leave so easily. New target found. Target locked. Have a nice day. Oh. And then birds fly inside for... Why is it that he... That machine targeted him when he stepped off and not us? Whatever. That, that, that fight is stupid. Not entirely sure how I can improve it on it either. Not at all. I don't know, maybe somehow make it so the target blind spots are moving around or something? Tell you what, I probably wouldn't have a message pop up for every space you stepped on. I'd probably use like a sound effect to indicate that. Alright, so here we are on the first floor or storage room. Yeah, this is a storage room. They said that, that machine said that we were supposed to come here to find Zone's friends, but they're not actually here. Also, we have this shop right here we haven't been in yet. I have one very special move for you to learn, but I won't teach it to you until you've collected every token possible. In other words, you need all 300 tokens in the game in order to find this ability. It is like your reward for collecting all the tokens in the game. It'll be a little bit yet before we are able to get that. How close are we? We have 274 tokens. So we're getting close, but we still have some tokens in earlier worlds that we couldn't reach because we didn't have the right abilities yet. And upon examining my nose, it has occurred to me, or rather I read, that I forgot to talk about a couple things. So, remember how I said this place actually did have five trophies planned? One of the trophies that was dropped, and I imagine the trophy that was dropped, was... There was a trophy in the dark room. I'm not sure if there was like some sort of special thing for it. A special trick that you had to get to it. For all I know, the trophy was just sitting there. Anyway, now we're in space. But we're not actually in space. This is like some sort of special hallway that's sort of looking out into space. Because you have this like mesh over us and I guess that's holding the air in. Also, there's all of our friends. It has occurred to me that I could have come down here earlier and gotten different dialogue before fighting Alien. Speaking of Alien, the other thing I forgot to mention about that guy is he's using an Anime Maker sprite. For those of you who don't know, in RPG Maker 1, in Anime Maker, which is... Well, first off, there's Anime Maker. It is the, uh... Oh, I already explained it, didn't I? Yeah, I showed off sprites earlier. But yeah, Anime Maker is the built-in art tool for creating custom sprites and custom monsters in RPG Maker 1. Also, here's the last switch that does nothing. But within Anime Maker, you actually have a bunch of sprites that aren't available uh, in RPG Maker 1 itself, for whatever reason. There's a whole bunch of custom sprites that you have to save onto your memory card in order to be able to use them. And Alien happens to be one of them. They start at, well, I'm just going to have it showing you, they start at whatever this number is. And they go down. There's a whole bunch of custom sprites for like wandering around the map. For example, Alien. And there's also a, a, a sprite in Anime Maker, a custom monster that isn't available in the default resources. That is the correct way to that I want to put it. These sprites, these special sprites aren't in the default resources. I don't know why though. Wupolian. Thaddeus is looking for you. That's nice. So these guys are called Wupolians. Why are they called Wupolians? Guess I was just trying to be silly. They're, they're also kind of in the way. Everyone is here, but we still can't leave. Parts of the Scotty Beam are missing. Perhaps they're in some of the crates upstairs. 
And for the last trophy in this world, we have a fetch quest. And not a particularly good one because there, we have to search all the crates upstairs and there's nothing to indicate which crates are you want to search in. I mean, it's nice that there aren't too many crates, but still not very good. Let's see, if I recall, one of them's here. Or here, here. No, maybe I'm thinking of the other side. Yeah, I'm thinking of the other side. So, one of them is... I gotta be close. Okay, maybe I don't remember this... Oh, here it is. Here is one of the four pieces of the Scotty Beam. At least it tells you how many there are. Do I even know I'm supposed to look for these? Yeah, it's actually possible to actually start looking for these right at the start of the level before you even rescue Zone and Monkey and all that. So yeah. That message would be kind of funnier if you actually started looking for them beforehand. But anyway, that brings me to the problem with this particular level and an issue that kind of comes up with the game in general. It's kind of linear. So many crates. Couldn't they put labels on these? But somebody wound up complaining about the linearity of this game back when I first released it. I'm gonna have to fight this guy, huh? Screw you. Has that failed yet? I'm making it a mission now to try to make that attack fail. Excuse me while I just go in and out of the elevator a bit. But I shall continue talking about the thing I'm talking about. But yeah, somebody complained about the linearity of this game back when I first released it. And, you know, it was a legit uh, complaint. But I kind of ignore it. It's like, you can go in trophies in different orders. And you can go to World 3 before you can go to World 2. Yeah, that lot of good that did. But the thing with the trophies is, back in the beginning of the game, there was it was linear, yeah. You had to find the, the first trophy to get into the first world, of course. And then... Still no. And then, once you were in World 1, there was only one trophy you could collect, and that was to fight... Will you stop getting in my way? There was only one trophy you could get when you entered World 1, and that was to fight the boss of World 1. And then the game opened up. But after that, you had to go into through all the worlds in a specific order. Sure, you could go to Mount Snow before going to Sea Land, but yeah, like I said, that was not done too well. No, seriously, this attack can fail. But anyway, this world is the worst offender as far as- STOP THAT! This world is the worst offender as far as linearity goes. Because the only trophy you can get out of order in this world is that room with the bridge and the lights flashing on and off. All of the others follow a specific path. You go to the third floor to, and help Monkey rescue his friends there. And then, after that, and only after that, you go ahead and fight Alium, and then after that, and only after that, we have this last trophy in which the only way we can get out of here, or rather, the only way we can get the last trophy is collecting these pieces. And while, yeah, you can collect these uh, pieces before you know you're supposed to collect them, you won't actually be able to use them until after you defeat Alien, because Monkey is sure as heck not going to leave without the friends that are on the top floor being held captive by Alien. Well, so finally, this attack failed. Told you it was possible. In fact, it failed twice in a row. What the heck? And there we go. How much MP? Oh, I used all my MP at that time. So if I go to this thing, I can still use Spotlight. Are you actually going to use me? Uh, let me use Spotlight. I don't have MP. That should not have worked. Wait. 
Where's uh, where's my hero's MP stat? No, apparently you can in fact use spotlight on this robot even if you have no MP. What the heck? All right, back to hunting for these uh, pieces. Here is one of the four pieces of the Scotty Beam. How do I even know there are four? And then the last one is up here near the Cluckles. Is it this one? It's one of these. This is annoying. Why did I do this? How many does that leave? That leaves none. I wonder if that's like a joke making fun of the fact that I didn't actually get the player a real way to keep track of how many Scotty Bean pieces you found. Because there's no counter for that. And I'm not sure I could have even had a counter. Actually, yeah, I could have had a counter. I could have actually put in the effort to say, here's the second one, if I, it happens to be the second one. But no, I was uh, too lazy and worried too much about memory, maybe to actually keep track of how many of these you got. It would have certainly been convenient had I let the player know how many they collected so far, but... you know. Anyway, now that we got the Scotty Bean pieces, we can finally finish this world. These are a lot of naked people. Those are the missing pieces of the Scotty Bean! Everyone, we're going home. You've been a great help to us. Please take this. Where's he getting all these trophies? Well, I'm off. Can I follow you? This door doesn't seem to work. Why doesn't it work? Is there like any exclamation explanation for this not working? Whatever. No. In that case, let us leave. Power cell broken. Me can see Whoopole. Me take quick way there. Uh, whatever. Let's leave. Also, I assume this implied to be that planet there is supposed to be the planet of Whoopole. Again? Why is it called Whoopole? I don't know. We're done with this world. Kind of think of it, since we defeated Alien, we technically didn't even have to go ahead and uh, help Monkey and his friends get to that teleporter and find the missing Scotty Beam pieces. Because Alien defeating him opened the last boss door. Right, be be right behind that door that Jester was talking about. That's the end of the game. Yeah, seriously, when Jester said that this was the last door, he really means this is the last door. Potentially, I could just go through that door right now and end this. However, I want to show off the rest of this game. So, next time we are going to go through uh, all the previous worlds, or most of them anyway, we already finished Sealand. But all the others, we still have some trophies we didn't get yet, and some tokens we didn't get yet. Also, next time I'm going to show off what that bonus room was all about. Here's a hint, it's what you get for collecting all the trophies in the game, and it's a really nice bonus too. And along with that, you know how I've been kind of talking about stuff that was dropped fr dropped from the game, dropped content and that sort of thing? Next time I'm going to tell you about all the remaining dropped content in the game, including what was dropped from those two special worlds that were originally planned but didn't get put in the game. I'll see you then. Hey, did I seem a little angrier in this episode to you?
And speaking on how linear this place is, why is it that the elevator leading to the boss's lair is inside the prison cell?